Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. So to begin today's video, we are going to be speaking about courage. What it is and why it is a very um, crucial characteristic or personality trait for us Muslims to adopt, especially in this day and age. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So taking an example from our righteous predecessors, I want to give you guys um, an Islamic view of what courage is. Imam Nawawi, as, as well as Imam Hazm, defined courage to be as the ability to stand up to defend the truth, even in the face of possible opposition and also to call people to goodness and forbid evil. The list goes on to describe what courage is, but I just want us to stop right there and think about some of the lists that our great Imams of the previous generation have shared with us. If we begin with the topic of the ability to stand up for the truth, even when faced or even in the possibility of facing opposition, you and I can relate to the fact that that is something that we are finding very hard to do nowadays, especially as quote unquote modern day Muslims, right? Sometimes we want to fit in with everybody else. Sometimes we just want to make it seem as if we are normal because we don't want to be rejected in whichever society we're in. We want to try to fit ourselves into that society as much as possible. However, the reminder here for myself as well as for you guys is that Islam began as a strange religion and it will end as a strange religion. So as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, glad tidings to the strangers. Okay, glad tidings to the strangers. We are strange in the eyes of the world at large. The things we do are strange sometimes because it's misunderstood sometimes because it's not understood at all sometimes because other people just don't know and brings to mind a saying that a colleague of mine an old colleague of mine used to say and she used to say this to children who were autistic and she said it's different but it's okay i repeat that it's different but it is okay i think just generally as human beings we're kind of trained and programmed to view anything that is different as equal to bad and that is not the case we are different we do stand out we look different we speak different we live differently our lifestyle is slightly different but you know what it's okay and it's more than okay it is something that we should be proud of islam is something that we should be proud of i want to use this video as an encouragement to encourage you and i to be proud of who we are sisters we wear hijab and we are clearly recognized as muslims brothers sometimes that's how you know and, and sometimes that's how I, I kind of get triggered when brothers want to talk about sisters and their hijab because you've got no clue. You've got, you've got no clue whatsoever. As brothers, you can, you can walk around wearing pretty much whatever you like and no one would be able to identify you as a Muslim. But the moment a sister puts on hijab, she is literally, literally presenting herself as a Muslim. And in a world where Muslims can be attacked in one way or another, that takes a different level of Iman to be able to maintain. But that is a side note. What I want to do here is to encourage you and I to be proud of who we are. Yes, we have Islam, but it's worthy of being proud of. And why is it worthy of being proud of? Because it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, the one whom to which we will return, he is the one that has given us Islam. So who cares if the world likes it or not? Whether they like it or not, we exist. And as long as we can coexist in perfect harmony with others, we can agree to disagree. As long as everyone else is safe, I don't see what the problem is about you being different. Yes, you wear hijab. Yes, you pray five times a day. Yes, you starve yourself in the month of Ramadan for hours on end only to then eat in the evening. And yes, you go to a strange place that is called Hajj and you save up a whole bunch of money for many years before you're able to go. And yes, you can't um, leave the house without covering yourself or actually having your aura covered in one way or another. And yes, we only eat halal foods and so on and so forth and so forth. But that is okay. We are different and that is 
okay. Courage is something that grows as your level of Iman grows. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is known to have said that a strong believer is better and is more lovable to Allah than a weak believer. But there is goodness in both of them. There is goodness in every believer. If we think about the stories of the Sahabas, the things that they went through, for example, the torture that Ali radiallahu anhum went through in order to try, in order to try to get him to denounce Islam, in order to try to get him to leave the religion of Islam, but yet he persisted. That right there is courage. That right there shows strength of Iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you and I strength of Iman in which no matter the situation that we face, we can be proud of who we are as Muslims and we can stand by Allah and the religion of Allah knowing that this life is only temporary. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you and I courage, the courage to be able to uphold the deen, to speak the truth when the truth needs to be spoken. Yes, our religion does not condone um, same-sex marriages and so on and so forth. And these are deep issues that sometimes we try to sugarcoat and we don't really want to talk about it. Yes, we don't condone it and Islam does not accept it. And yes, Islam does see it as a sin. But does that mean that myself as a Muslim, if I have... Um, a, a gay neighbor or a neighbor who is a lesbian does that mean i then go and harm them of course of course not life is still valuable life is still life and we can still respect each other's boundaries without attacking each other so because i might not see that same-sex marriage situation as something acceptable in my religion does not mean that what i believe is wrong and what you believe is right and that takes on to another area of courage courage is all about the truth and it's not about our truth, it's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's truth. I've seen a lot of videos coming up nowadays about my truth, my truth, my truth. As Muslims, it's not about our truth, it's about Allah's truth. And we stand by what is Allah's truth. And how do we know what is Allah's truth? It's all based on what is in this book, the Quran. This is the guide that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left for us. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come and gone. He's left us with his sunnah. So if we can follow this book and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an example, then it will be better for us. So again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the courage that we need to uphold our faith and stand by it strongly. In English, in English, courage is defined by not that. Now we're going to remind ourselves of a very clear and yet obvious examples that both you and I already know of, but it will help to drive the message home. And I am on Surah Al Anbiyat, and that is Quran um, chapter twenty-one, and I'll be reading from verses fifty-one um, onwards. I'm not quite sure where I want to stop yet, but we'll start from verse fifty-one. The translation of which reads, We bestowed a full time on Abraham and his rectitude of conduct, and well were we acquainted with him. Behold, he said to his father and his people, What are these images to which you are so assiduously devoted? They said, We found our fathers worshipping them. He said, Indeed, you have been in manifest error, you and your fathers. They said, have you brought us the truth or are you one of those who jest? Meaning, are you joking with us? He said, nay, your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and he who created them from nothing. And I am a witness to the truth. And by Allah, I will certainly plan against your idols after you go away and turn your backs. So he broke them into pieces, all but the biggest of them, that they might turn and address themselves to it. They said, who has done this to our gods? He must indeed be one of the unjust ones. They said, we heard a youth talk of them. He is called Abraham. They said, then bring him before the eyes of the people that they may be a witness. They said, art thou the one who di that did this to our gods, O Abraham? He said, nay, this was done by the biggest one, 
Ask them if they can talk. So they turned to themselves and said, Surely you are the one in the wrong. Then were they confounded with shame, they said. Thou knowest full well that these idols do not speak. Abraham said, Do you then worship beside Allah things that can neither be of good to you nor do you harm? So Abraham found his people worshipping th these false idols that they created with their own hands, pretty much. And what they were doing there was creating these idols, putting them aside and worshipping them. So Abraham basically destroyed the smaller, quote unquote, gods, idols, right? And then whilst the people were away and when they returned, they found that the smaller idols had been destroyed. So they said, who did this? And then Abraham said, well, it wasn't me. Maybe you should ask the bigger one, ask the bigger God. He can tell you who destroyed the smaller gods. And so they turned around to Abraham and they said, come on, don't be silly, pretty much, right? Don't be silly. You know that these idols can't talk. So Abraham is like, well, if they can't talk, why are you worshipping something that can't benefit you nor can it harm you? For goodness sake, you're the one that made it with your own hands and you're worshipping it. If anyone has a right to be worshipped, it's probably you more so than the idols that you've created, right? So he tries to get the message across to them that what they are doing is wrong. And this takes a huge amount of courage because Abraham is a child. He grew up with his father and his father is also an idol worshipper. And the courage that it takes for you as a young person to be able to tell an older person that what you're doing is wrong. You know, I've spoken about this issue in one of my vlogs of, you know, especially those of us from West African backgrounds, the idea of a child telling an adult that something that they're doing is wrong is unheard of, is disrespectful, you dare not do it. But again, when it comes back to the truth, when it comes back to not our truth, but Allah's truth, it needs to be said. It needs to be said in the best of ways, but it still needs to be said. Because the truth remains the truth irregardless and wrong remains wrong irregardless. If people are worshipping idols, it is wrong irregardless. Not because I decide that it's wrong, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides that it's wrong. So yes, a child, Abraham is a child. A child can come and tell fully grown adults that what they are doing is wrong. Why? Because it is Allah's truth. And that in and of itself shows a huge amount of courage. Going back to the idea of courage being being able to speak the truth, even when you stand to lose something. So I hope this has been a great reminder and benefit for you. Before I close off this section of the video, I just wanted to share with you guys a few things that you can do to embed courageness into your um, personality, into your character. And this is first and foremost advice for myself before it is advice for you. One of the ways in which we can adopt a courageous character is by caring less what other people think. And I know that can be so hard. I mean, we all struggle with it one way or another. But really, the less you care about what other people think and the more you care about what Allah thinks, the easier it becomes for you to stand up for what is the truth. And when I say caring less about what other people think, I mean in the way of good. I don't mean shamelessly committing sins around the place and saying, I don't care what other people think. No, that doesn't mean you're, you have courage. That just means you're shameless. There's a fine line between having courage and being shameless, okay? Shameless deeds is just sinning all over the place and saying, I don't care who finds out, or I don't care who knows, or I don't care to hide my sins because I don't care what other people think. That's shamelessness, okay? That's a different thing. That's not a good characteristic. But courage is about not caring what other people think in terms of doing the right thing, okay? And I think you and I can definitely develop that aspect about ourselves. So I think that's one of the ways that we can develop the, the characteristic of being courageous is by caring less what other people think and trying less to people please and doing more to Allah please, right? The next way that I would recommend is being certain that this life is temporary. We say it all the time, but really a lot of us really have, it hasn't sunk into our minds the fact that we're only just a number of days. We are literally only just a number of days. And from the moment you're born, your death date is already written. We will leave this world. 
Getting too preoccupied with this dunya is part of the problem that holds us back from being able to stand up for what is right, stand up for our deen and stand up for the truth. But when you know that you're only a visitor in this dunya and you will be going to your final home, it changes your perspective, it changes your mindset, it changes the way you do everything because you're always thinking about your forever home. You know, it's like when people moving into a new house and they're like, I, I can't be bothered to decorate because this is not my forever home. I don't care this doesn't have everything that I want because this is not my forever home. When I get to my forever home, I'll decorate it the way I want. I'll have everything that I want in it. It's a, it's a similar mindset. When you think about your forever home, you know that this place is temporary. You don't get so fixated. And so it's easier. It's easier to stand up for what is the truth because you know that the truth is going to lead you to your forever home. And at the end of the day, our actions will determine where we will end up where our forever home will be, whether it will be in heaven or whether it will be in hell. So try your best to always remind yourself that this place is only temporary. Regardless of what anyone does, you and I, we will leave sooner or later. And that's just the facts. The next way to be courageous is by seeking knowledge. Knowledge is such a light. It's a gift. It's hard to, it's, it's hard to present yourself correctly when you don't even know your religion. So when someone else comes with an opposing view, we kind of back off because we're like, oh, OK, I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to respond. I, I don't really I don't really have a comeback to what they're saying. Why? Because we lack the knowledge. So we have to make it a priority for ourselves to continuously learn. You never fully know the dean. There's always something else to learn. The dean is so rich. There are so many sciences. There are the thick of this and the thick of that and the thick of there's so many sciences. But as well as knowledge is another thing that we really should consider is wisdom, right? Allah says argue with them in a way that is best, meaning we should use knowledge and also wisdom. Wisdom is something very, very important. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have wisdom in terms of how you deliver that knowledge, it just will not sink in whatsoever. So another thing that will help us to have courage is certainty. And therefore, knowledge leads to certainty. Knowledge helps us to be certain of our religion and it helps us to be able to argue our case and put it forward in a way that others can understand. And therefore, we're, we're more able to stand up for ourselves in situations where we find others are attacking us and atta attacking our religion. So those are just a few ways that you and I can encourage ourselves to become more courageous, stand up for ourselves as Muslims, be proud, sisters wear your hijab, brothers wear your thobe, go to the masjid, ask for a place to pray at work. It's okay, we are different and different is okay. Different doesn't always mean bad and we stand up for Allah's truth, not our truth. And may Allah make it easy for you and I to adopt the characteristic of being courageous, to stand up for the truth, even if we feel that someone is going to attack us for it. But we stand up for the truth because it is Allah's truth and nobody is going to change Allah's truth. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this section of the video. And without further ado, here comes the rest of my day. Hey guys, so I've been digging through my storage items. Whoops. Because I am looking for something. And uh, this is the whole mess that I've created <laughs> in the pursuit of looking for what I need. But um, I can get my foot through. Um, I did find it. It's in that bag right there. Thank God lockdown is over. I can get all the stuff out of the space. Um, give some stuff to charity, guys. Oh my God. These are <laughs> these are my books from... SubhanAllah, there is a Quran in there. Allahu Akbar. I feel bad, guys. I actually wanted a Quran like that to go away. Okay, I'm gonna... That is a Quran. Allah forgive me. I don't know how it ended up in there. But these are actually my books from uni these are actually my uni books guys whoever studied psychology between the years 2009 to 2012 you might recognize some of these you see that statistics books those who say like psychology is not a real science that was us this is an SPSS book that is another statistics book as well wow yeah so basically I want to give some of well, pretty much all of this away I was going to sell it but now it's just like 
I don't know if it's relevant anymore because it's been so long. So all this stuff is going to go to charity. I know it looks like a whole bunch of rubbish, but it's, it's actually really not. There's useful stuff in there that I'll, uh, I'll give away, inshallah. Astaghfirullah, guys. It was an actual... Well, it is an actual Quran. Exactly the same one as what I have. But I think I might... I'm going to... I know who I'm going to give this to. In fact... If any one of you guys, I might hang on to this a little bit longer. If anyone's watching and you want uh, some psychology, like university level psychology books, you can see there. Let me know. I'll be happy to to um, send you guys these. You just might have to pay for postage. Okay. So much. Oh my God. Guys. I'm telling you, studying is no joke. These are all the books I went through, and they cost a lot of money. You know, these books are not even cheap. Like, I remember spending, I think the cheapest book I ever bought was like almost 40 pounds, which is like almost 50 something dollars, 60 something dollars. Like, I wish the prices were still there, but they're not. So, yeah, if anyone is interested let me know like i said they are slightly older but before you benefit from it let me know inshallah just email me okay another Quran seriously okay, so this is this is not on this is not on <laughs> it is <laughs> it's another Quran wow alhamdulillah good thing I have a do oh this is okay this is the one that I'm gonna give away okay um sister Baraka if you're watching um this is going to be yours, okay? Alhamdulillah. It was meant to be. Where's the other one? Okay. Oh. Looks like this was not such a waste of time after all. This morning when I woke up and I realized that I had to come in here and dig through all of this stuff just to find the materials, I was regretting it. And I almost didn't even bother to continue when I got halfway through. But now I found two Qur'ans that I'm going to give away. And one of you guys might be able to have the books. If not, I'll just give it off to, I don't know, some, some charity. So I'm going to give these Qur'ans just a very, very light wipe down. La Akbar. You go in looking for one thing and la decrease the other. You know the last vlog that I shared with you guys um, where I was ordering the Quran? Turns out that it hasn't arrived, so I'm just going to gift this one instead. To be honest, I don't know how I ended up with so many of these Qurans. I don't remember where I got this particular one from. The one for the transliteration. Oh yeah, Darul Salam. Yeah, Darul Salam. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Comes with a CD. Does anyone still own a CD player? I don't think I own a CD player. <laughs> I don't. I must have had this for so long because. Wow. I don't think I don't think they do that anymore. If they do, let me know, guys. But I don't think anyone does uh, Qurans and CD players anymore because. Technology has advanced so much in the last couple of years. Oh wow, this is going to be perfect. Yeah, so I have the exact same one. So that is why I'm going to gift this one away, inshallah. And you know what, guys? Here's a tip. Maybe you should get some, <laughs> some spring cleaning done um, this Ramadan if you have the energy for it. 
I must add if you have the energy for it because you never know you might find some stuff that's just stuck up in there maybe clean up your garage or something you might find things in there that you don't use and you don't need to be keeping in there and someone else might be able to make use of them you know so it's all good and also you get the opportunity to do an act of good deed by giving something away to charity someone else gets to get, have it and benefit from it and utilize it instead of it just sitting there collecting dust <laughs> like in my case don't know how two Qur'ans ended up in a book full of uh, my uni uh, books but alhamdulillah so these were what I actually went in my storage room for okay this fabric material is what I'm planning to use to get my Eid dress done for me I'm getting so what is happening is that I'm getting a dress tailor-made for me for Eid and this was the fabric that I wanted to use to get that dress made now I have quite a few of these fabrics I was actually um, selling them a very long time ago <laughs> And then somehow I just left the rest of it in the storage room and kind of forgot it, forgot about it. So I had a style in mind for the type of dress that I wanted for Eid. And that's when I remembered that this type of fabric would be perfect for it. It's kind of satin-like, but it's, it's a lot thicker than satin. So I think it will fall quite nicely for the, for the style that I'm looking for, which is very simple um, style, by the way. Um, and this is what I'm going to wear at home on on Eid day so yeah this was what I went in for and I am still selling them the, re the remaining um, parts so if you guys want like a five yard piece or a three yard piece let me know I'm gonna make them very affordable 15 to 20 pounds maximum so I was on like Pinterest for like hours as you do, those of us West Africans, you know how it is when you're looking for a style to get your dress sewn into. Um, and after all the shenanigans and going through so many different, like, really fancy styles, I just decided to go for something really basic and really simple. So I'm going to share with you guys this, the, the design that I'm going for. Because I also want it to be something I can wear outside of the house if I want to so it can't be something like too figure hugging and too tight so i need to have control over how tight and how figure hugging it is so let me just share with you guys those of you who are yoruba that watch me i'm just doing iro and buba okay and iro and buba is basically just the iro part is a, a wide um fabric piece that you wrap around your waist and the buba is basically like a long sleeve um loose very simple um, top that goes over it so for those of you who just want like a, a visual image of what that is let me share with you so that you can see better okay so can you guys see that better that's the kind of style that I'm going for I was going to get a lace material to get this made into but actually I do prefer the kind of satin material so this is how it would be worn okay so as you can see, she has a wrap around her waist, her lower part of the body, and then it's just a loose top underneath it. So very simple, but that's the idea. So that's the idea for my Eid outfit. Last year, I also wore quite a traditional um, um, attire in the house. Even though we were in lockdown, I did still get, <laughs> I still got lit in the house. <laughs> for myself because why not it's Eid and it's the Sunnah of Eid to wear your best clothes so even if you're in a car bee or you wear your bath full time and that's where you wear that's that is what you wear to the masjid alhamdulillah perfect but when you come home when you're with your families you can get dressed up guys I mean it's Eid get dressed up with your families and enjoy your Eid so this is going to be my outfit for Eid. I know some of you guys were hoping that I would share some like abaya whole hauls and things like that. Thing is about that, um, I have too many abayas as it is. <laughs> so if I ever do do a haul, maybe it's like a sponsorship and I find a really good company that um, 
makes really great quality abayas that I want to share with you guys, that's where you will see me doing abayas hauls. Otherwise, I might it might just be a case of me sharing my just basic, normal, everyday type abayas or everyday type jilbabs that I need to top up, you know, as as they kind of get old. But in terms of really fancy abayas, I'm pr pretty much I'm pretty much counting about 36 of them at the moment. And that's a lot for anybody <laughs> so i'm not planning on buying anymore and i don't think there's any point in me sharing with you guys the type of abayas that i have because you won't be able to purchase it and i know for myself it's one of the worst things in the world when i see something on someone and i'm like that's exactly what i'm looking for i need that then come to find out i can't buy it so what's the point okay so please don't get upset with me if i am not sharing any uh, like um abayas with you guys but i mean if you still want to see let me know but i just i just feel like it would be pointless you know but anyways this is my material now the goal is to take this to the tailor um there's a sister in my local masjid that makes um dresses so she's going to make this for me um and since we are about we've only got three weeks of ramadan left i need to get this to her asap so she can put me in her queue for making dresses because I'm sure she'll be pretty busy this this Ramadan all right so basically it's a hair care day I need to get my hair done so I usually do my hair at home by myself and what I'm going to be using is this S curl no drip um, curl activating moisturizer it's meant to be a moisturizer but I use this as a detangler by far the best detangler I have ever used I mean ever it is so 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 good and then remove my braids after i'm done removing my braids i'm then going to wash my hair shampoo and condition my hair after that i'm going to deep condition my hair using this olive oil hair mayonnaise this is going to help to like restore um restore <laughs> the uh, strength of your hair and i've added extra olive oil in there just to kind of boost up the conditioning ability of that after that i'm going to then um let my hair air dry and then i'm going to moisturize with my sheer miracle leave-in conditioner and rebraid my hair this is my routine guys i keep my hair braided probably 90 percent of the time and then once in a while i'll leave it out and just enjoy it for a couple of weeks and then braid it back up again if you want your hair to grow and you are a black sister sis you need to do something about some kind of protective styling by the way this thing here that you're going to see on top of my head this is a steaming cap it heats up warms up shall i say it doesn't really get too hot it warms up so that it helps the products that you put into your hair to penetrate deeper into the shafts of the hair so that's why i have this on if you're wondering what exactly it is anyways as I deep condition my hair, I'm going to be actually reading this book. You guys know that this is one of my books I wanted to read for Ramadan. Um, and then I'll read Quran later. Question. Juicy topic, guys. This question was asked, um, was answered by Sheikh Mohammed ibn Uthaymeem. And the question was, does kissing break the wudu? And the question says, my husband always kisses me when he leaves the house, even if he is going out to prayer in the masjid. I feel that sometimes he kisses me with passion. So what is the Islamic ruling regarding my wudu? The answer says, Aisha radiallahu anhum reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to kiss some of his wives before going out to prayer and he would not make wudu. So here's the commentary. In this ahadith is in this ahadith is the ruling of touching a woman and kissing her. Does the wudu nullify or does it not nullify? The scholars may may Allah have mercy on them differed on this issue. There are some among them who said kissing nullifies wudu. In all situations, as soon as the woman is touched, there are others amongst the scholars who said that the wudu only nullifies if a person touches the woman with desire. And lastly, a third opinion of the scholars is that the wudu does not nullify no matter what. This last opinion, which is the wudu 
does not nullify even if he kisses, touches or hugs his wife is the most correct opinion. This is the case so long as he does not ejaculate, no secretions come out. So the wudu of both man and woman is not nullified. This is because of the rule of the state of wudu remains upon what it was until there is proof that it is broken. There is no proof in the book of Allah nor in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that shows that touching a woman nullifies wudu. So based on this touching a woman even skin to skin contact and even kissing and hugging with desire all these does not nullify wudu and Allah knows best. Right, I can feel my head getting warm, so I think I'm gonna pause right here. I'm gonna go wash my hair and then I'm gonna braid it. Obviously, I can't share that with you guys, so you gotta go. Inshallah, guys, I'll see you in my next video. I don't really have hijab on, obviously, because my hair is under a shower cap and it's, it's steaming. Um, I just have this wrapped around my neck, just in case anyone's like, how, how do you steam your hair with hijab on? It's not on. Alright guys, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Okay, let's go. Wash this off.